what we've got now is I've got a couple of um, high quality RCA connectors connected to the line input of the UMA25S. So I'm now going into this from a standalone preamp. So I've got a mic going into a standalone preamp and the line output from that preamp is being fed into the line inputs on the Behringer UMA25S. So we're trying now to record with the mic and this time using the line inputs not the built-in mic input but you still get the same problem and that is if I've got logic put into monitoring okay <clears throat> and if I take a pair of good headphones and get a little adapter like that can you see that yeah um, a little adapter jack so I've got some good quality headphones plugged in here and this is the situation okay so the output the line input is coming from the preamp and the mic into the Behringer and the line output as before is going into the active monitors and they're turned up at a reasonable listening level so when I press play on the Mac once upon a time yeah, that's just a bit of vocal I tried recording. Now, so you're getting playback, okay? Okay, so I'm getting playback. Now, the problem is this. So I now talk into the mic. One, two. One, two, three. And um, you can quite clearly hear that it's passing into the line input and it's passing straight back through. Now I can hear it on the headphones and I can hear playback on the headphones so I can hear myself and I can hear the backing track but there's no way to stop it coming out of the speakers. If I turn this input right down or this direct monitor in out control I can still hear it in the headphones but it's still coming out of the speakers. So um, there's no way to stop it. I can put the button in, the monitoring button in, and then one, two, I still hear it on the headphones, but it's still coming out of the speakers, even though it's turned right down. So the only way to do it is you've got to deactivate the speakers completely, and now you can record fine. If I hit play and record now, and I can record the vocal while listening to the backing drum loop. Okay, here it comes. You can't hear the click, but. Oh, hang on a minute. No, I've got no monitoring now, have I? I turned it down on the headphones by lowering that direct monitor output there, the very end control that we discussed earlier. One, two, three. Right, here we go. So I'm just lada in the mic here. Three, four. <laughs> and I've recorded it and I'm playing it back and I can hear it fine but to get it to come out of the speakers I then have to go through the palaver of turning my oh crikey what's going to happen actually when I do this I'll have to right I've got the headphones off press play if I turn that monitoring right down that adjusts my volume now. But the problem is I can't mute the mic now. If I turn these speakers up any further, the mic is still coming in on the line input and there's no way of muting that line input. So if I turn the speaker up, I instantly get feedback and you can hear the mic is feeding around the speakers. So really you need to use this with a passive volume control. Ideally this needs to be used with a little mixer tablet, a little sort of like a Behringer uh, 5 into 2 or something like that. But it, and in the manual, with, in all fairness to Behringer, it does show this thing always being used with a mixer to control the routing and the muting and the monitoring. I just think it's a shame that they didn't include a simple mute switch for the line output. I mean, a mute switch, how hard would it have been to put a mute switch um, next to the line out so you could just instantly mute the line out? And a mute switch next to the line input. Simple as that. Better still, if they were on the front, like mute playback, like mute 
in, like mute in, mute out, just two buttons on the front. You could quite easily, they could have fitted them in just above there or something. Anyway, uh, let's have a look at the result of that recording, and it's not a great scientific quality recording or anything, but uh, let's have a look at it. Okay, um, as I said, there's nothing scientific about this, okay, but um, first of all, this, and I'll colour it orange so you, or something so you can see. Hang on. Um, Okay. The orange is the Behringer, and this wave here, which is, uh, I'll make it purple. There you go. Okay, orange is the Behringer UMA25S, and purple is the Apogee Duet. Both recording now on the line inputs. Okay, so this was, this was recording from the Joe Meek being fed into the line input RCA connectors on the Behringer UMA25S and this was being fed from the Joe Meek into the line input on the Duet okay and it's a cheap Chinese mic okay so this is the uh, Behringer once upon a time there were three little piggies and they lived in a house made of straw yeah, yeah they did one okay and this is the Behringer and remember both of these are playing out through the capture audio driver which isn't very high quality this is the Behringer I mean this is the uh, duet once upon a time there were three little piggies and they lived in a house made of straw yes they did another Behringer upon a time there were three little piggies once upon a time there were three little piggies. Okay, and now the apogee again. Once upon a time there were three little piggies. And they lived in a house made of straw, yes they did. Once upon a time there, there were three, three little, little piggies. piggies. And they lived in a house made of straw. One more time, the duet. Once upon a time, there were three little piggies. And the Behringer UMA25S. Once upon a time, there were three little piggies. To be honest, I'm singing the Behringer better. I was trying to copy when I was singing into the duet. But uh, it kind of, you know, you can hear that the Apogee, even though we're going through this Joe Meek in both cases and through into the line inputs of both the Behringer and then the Duet, um, even feeding the um, Joe Meek into the line inputs, the Duet does have a crisper sound. It's got more kind of, more kind of uh, sort of defined image and presence around the kind of that whole presence region it's, it's got a sort of crisper sort of slightly tighter sound but um, I must say for the price the the Behringer UMA 25s sounds very good of course there was the problem that as I said that um, it's the same thing whether you're feeding into the little mic um, mini jack you know um, tip ring sleeve mini jack or it's the same going in from a standalone preamp into the RCA line inputs on the Behringer UMA25S. In either case, you've got to turn your speakers down manually. There's no way to mute the speakers if you want to listen on headphones from the UMA25S headphone socket. Okay, So I had to turn my active monitors off at the switch. Um, if you don't have that facility, you could, you could put a volume controller between the line out of the Behringer and your monitor speakers if you want to do it like that or if you're using an amp and speakers you'd need to be able to reach over and mute your amp or turn your amp off okay but um, yeah there's but considering the price the inputs once you use a decent little preamp and a decent little cheap Chinese mic even um, and feed it into the line inputs on the Behringer UMA25S it sounds okay it's not bad at all really when you consider the price okay there's the phone I better go